So the other day when Ray was fixing his drum brakes, I reminded him to make sure to put WD-40 on those brake pads so they stop real good. <laughs> well, obviously I was joking, but Wes over here overheard me saying that and we just catch him putting WD-40 on his brake shoes. <laughs> that ought to work real good. Okay. Oh shit. You want me to take it? You okay? Oh. I got you. Ray, you good? Yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! Dude, that was awesome. Hey everyone, so to catch you up on what's been going on so far, as you've seen, we've got all the bikes here at Rocky Mountain. We've had some time to go through, shake the bikes down, find out what's broken on these, what needs to be fixed, also what other parts and accessories that we're gonna need. And remember, we have that budget that we can't go over, and we have a goal. So the five miles of hell ride is in two weeks, but in one week, we wanna be able to take our bikes, go out to West Mountain and ride these things and see if they're gonna hold up to some of the abuse. Myself, on the other hand, I've got some work to do because I've got a pretty loud knock when I start my bike, so I think the bottom end might be the culprit. I haven't gotten there yet, so that's what I gotta do next, but got a lot of work to do, but we're pretty excited to get out there and give these things a test run. Okay, now we all know that TTR 225 is the absolute best bike of the bunch, um, except for one small thing. The suspension can't even hold its, its own weight up. Me on my tight budget, I've got to do something to at least stiffen up the suspension, hopefully keep the front end up a little bit so it doesn't dive under braking, downhill drops, or me even just sitting on it. I'm just going to cut them up, put some solid steel tubing in there and see if it works. I pulled the cylinder off. As I showed you before, I had some huge gouges above the exhaust port. It looked like the uh, piston ring got caught in the exhaust port. So I didn't know how big a piston to go, so I went with a whole millimeter bigger, got a new Wiseco piston. I took it up to Lindsay Machine Racing LMR, and they bored it out to the new piston. And as you can see, they got rid of all the big gouges in there. The cylinder looks perfect now. These guys did an awesome job. It's like a brand new cylinder. Now one last thing before I slap this baby together, where Yamaha put in this sleeve, you know, back in 1980, um, there's like some ugly ridges between the, the uh, steel sleeve and the aluminum cylinder. So I've got some real ugly um, marks transitions in this port so I'm gonna take a little Dremel tool just a little treat Dremel tool here and I'm gonna clean up those edges a little bit just to make everything flow nice and smooth give me a little more power so I can really you know tear these guys up in five miles of hell give you an update on my cylinder I just want to tell you where I'm at with the rest of the bike I uh, replaced all the seals on this thing the shift shaft seal it had like fallen out so I put a new seal in there put a new seal behind my sprocket here on the counter shaft and there was a shoelace tied up in the old seal so that's why it was leaking so no more leaks there I'm stoked to get the cylinder piston on this thing and see if it'll run I've pretty much bought all my parts um, and I'm sitting at like, I still got $100 to spare. So I think this thing is going to be ready to rock and roll with, you know, $100 to spare. So I guarantee none of these other guys are that far ahead. Yeah. Yeah, bro, there you go. Perfect. So I hear yeah. Worst case scenario. Worst is happening. Yeah, worst case scenario is uh, happening. We have a bad crank and piston. All right, the update is we have the motor pulled. Piston and crank are pad. Um, so right now I'm actually just cleaning up the motor, getting it ready for us to pull it apart, split the cases. But, so if you ever pull a motor apart and you're looking at your top end, you've got your piston here and you've got your connecting rod. You have up and down play. 
and it's not gonna be enough to where you can see it on camera, but you'll be able to feel it. Yeah, that's not a good thing. If you have up and down play, that means your bearings are worn and you really need to replace your bottom end at that point before you, you know, risk doing some serious damage. So on top of the crank being bad, also the piston obviously is pretty worn out. It got some pretty bad scoring here on the sides. I don't have enough money in my budget though to do a complete rebuild kit. So I'm gonna take a bit of a risk. I've got a complete bottom end rebuild kit, so we're gonna install that. I'm gonna reuse this piston, but I'm gonna get new piston rings. And by doing that with the piston rings, that'll leave me enough budget left over to do, you know, the throttle cable, clutch cable, tube, some other stuff that I know I have to have still for my bike. So I'm gonna take a gamble and put a new bottom end in with an old used piston and hopefully I just make it through. So that's the plan so far. Okay, don't go too crazy, it might leak. Screw you, dude. <laughs> it's like all Hondas, it's probably cold blooded. Once she's warm, she's good. I'm just happy that it comes good off of off of idle. Yeah. Like it idles and comes off of idle without any problems because yeah. I'm gonna need that. Yeah. What'd you find? It's an old crappy bike, that's what I found. So we found strip bolts, oozing oil. Uh, we tried to pull the valve cover off, but there's not enough room without pulling the entire engine. Um, I'm just not that invested in this to pull the entire engine. So when we crack the valve cover off, they've never even had any sealant in here. There's no been no bonding agent or anything. So I think we can cure the oozing with a little uh, little Yama Bond 4. Glue this thing back together. See what we can do about the stripped out bolt. Maybe we find one that's a few millimeters longer and get down in there and hold a little bit. Button it up, ride it. Alright, so I'm cleaning up my airbox, but I figured out that this piece kind of pops off and that's what you're supposed to be able to tighten the air filter to to make a seal here. So I'm going to try and cut this out, put some new silicone around here, re-rivet it back together. I was out of town for like a day and they went ham on my bike. As you can see, I have a new rear fender set up. New wheel graphic and a backward seat, so I'm set. Okay, so I found a seat. He thinks of Justin, he sent me a link. For whatever reason, he was looking for a seat for me. So I ordered this, we'll see what it looks like and if it fits my bike. And then I pulled pretty much every part that fits my bike and some that doesn't, and we're gonna figure out if it's gonna work or not. This is all of my budget and a little more, I think. So, hey, don't worry about it. I gotta, I gotta get it out there and then decide what I'm keeping and what I'm not. You ready for this, Chancellor? No. Look at all my parts, dude. I brought this from home. It's been sitting in my garage for a long, long time. What do you think? That's not looking very promising. There's no let's way. Figure it out. There's no way a dirt bike seat fits in that box. Hey, let's figure it out, dude. You want to make a bet? That's it. Okay. Well, that looks kind of. Will it fit? Fingers crossed. What is this? <laughs> you gotta don't worry teeter, about teeter, it. Teeter totter. <laughs> it's not like it's not as good a shape as the seat that came off of it, but that flew off. Of it. It'll do. And by the seat that came off of it, what he means is the seat <laughs> that flew off on the freeway. <laughs> It jumped ship, dude, it was out. It was like, no, five miles of hell, no way. All right, so the next thing I'm tackling is my chain and sprockets. So you can see the biggest challenge with this bike is the fact that the sprocket and the drum brake are both on the right side. I tracked down this sprocket, which you can see has a large inner diameter, 
it fits up to a 96 YZ250. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some measurements, see if we can get this thing on there. 152, basically. It looks like it's gonna fit and work. The inner diameter is big enough, and you can see that this new sprocket is much bigger. It's four teeth larger than this one, so it's gonna help us out on the trail. We got a sprocket, dude! Oh yeah, look at that. One crack, two crack, three crack, four crack. Four crack, dude. <laughs> Lower gearing, I have a recon tire. It's gonna be an off-road freaking billy goat. Justin almost stole my tire, but then he just hit it, so good to go. <laughs> Seems kind of convenient you had a spare ultra heavy duty tube at home. Let's see if this baby will fire. I need to tighten my Get the bolt off. <laughs> Dude, take two. Maybe that's off. Did you turn the petcock on? Oh, ho, ho. nice. As you can see, my shift lever is broken. It's got a big crack in it. Both sides, it was all tweaked. I straightened it out best I could. Now I just gotta weld up those cracks. I think that ought to do it. All right, let's try this baby again. Oh, one kick. She's alive. Oh, she's not alive. The crap. Uh, yeah, so they seemed extremely wide. And once I cut the grips off, found out that they just kept the handguard bar inserts in the handlebar, slapped the grips on top, and just forgot about it. I just can't get them out. So that's what I'm working on now. This is not the right tool for the job. Uh, it may just work. A little slide hammer action. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Pro tip, watch for washers when you're pulling your cases apart. Yeah, baby. Out with the old. I looked at all the images and pulled all the round filters that we had. And luckily, I think this one might be a winner. So this is the stock one. I've got this one. It's looking like the cage is gonna match up okay. So let's go ahead and figure it out. Try and fit this thing in there. I think that's a perfect fit. New handlebars are on. Got hand guards because I don't want to break any levers while I'm out there. You know, new new clutch. Not a lot of new components on it. Most of it's been pulling it apart, lubing it cleaning it, getting everything in working order. Not a lot I can do about the engine. I can't afford a piston and, and rings on the budget I have for it. So we're just gonna have to ride it smoky. But other than that, just button it up, maybe get some stickers for it. Maybe a little duct tape for the seat. That's about it. So, no clutch. Just chuck through. Yeah. Oh wait, 
I forgot. Oh, okay, sorry. Super simple. Show off. Hey, what's up guys? We're back at it today and just wanted to give you guys a little update on the bike situation. So, we're actually doing a test ride out on West Mountain in two days. Now, pretty much everybody else is ready to go. Ray's bike, Chancellor's bike, and Justin's bike are all running. They're put back together. But as you can see, I've got a few more things to do on this bike. So, uh, I finished up putting together, rebuilding the airbox, put all new hardware in it. Made some new sealage there, so no dirt is getting through. I just need to oil my air filter. And then a couple other things that I'm doing is I've got some new clutch plates for this thing. Going to get those soaking in oil. I'm about ready to pull the clutch cover off and replace that, and I'm going to do crank seals at the same time. And then the last thing I need to do is re-go through the carburetor because I got my new float and needle. So after that, I should be ready to go for the ride on Wednesday. What's your role in this whole thing? Uh, supervision. Supervision. That's it. No, nah, he is. Because I will be the first to admit, I am not very mechanically inclined. I do little things here and there, but as far as tearing down a motor, completely rebuilding it, there's no way I would feel confident doing it completely on my own. So Charles has been supervising me, but making me do the dirty work, which is good though, because I like to learn about bikes. I love learning about the engines and it's only gonna get better from here. So we got the cases back together, new crank is installed. So a couple things, just a little advice. Once you put everything back together, we showed you earlier on the worn out crank, how you had that up and down play with the new crank in, you have no up and down play. You'll still have a little side to side, which we said is normal, but a couple things to check here. You obviously wanna make sure that the crank can rotate freely once you have everything back together. You're gonna be able to wanna spin the transmission, have that spin freely, because if it doesn't, something's not right. You're gonna have to pull the cases back apart and look at it again, but cases together, we're gonna put everything back on. And next thing you know, we're gonna throw in the old piston, yeah, I'm nervous for that, but yeah, it's coming together good. So the chain had been adjusted all the way back, so I had no more room to adjust the thing. So I thought it'd be a good idea to take a couple links out of the chain. So I did that, put it all back together. Now I have plenty of adjustment in my chain, but the problem is this fat tire rubs the swing arm, so it hardly even rolls. I took it. I took it for a spin and it started smoking, so this tire is not going to work. Luckily, I have a little bit left in the budget, so I got me the Kenda Trackmaster, a lot skinnier tire. Um, I'm a little bummed I had to buy a tire, but it's going to be nice to have some fresh rubber on this thing. Ready? Moment of truth. Ooh, look at that. I got all sorts of clearance now. So this helmet is a perfect match for the DT-175. Vaughn, when he was a kid, his mom had this very bike and she had the matching helmet to go with it. So she was kind enough to let me borrow her helmet while I take the DT through five miles of hell. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Uh, so we got Brock Glover, he was in the office today and I had him sign my tank. So that's at least an extra 15 horsepower and lower gearing for the trails. So wait, we're gonna be so he could, he could draw on your bike, but I couldn't? Look at those drive plates, dude. Those are perfect. Surely somebody's had to replace this. Look at that. Sea foam. We're gonna try to clean Ray's bike up a little bit. Clean the carb. Check the valves. Just make sure it's gonna run. I'm a little nervous about that one. <laughs> All right, so I just went to impact my clutch hub nut and there's no more threads in it. So it just screwed it over. So I need to find another nut for that and try and clean off the shaft. So I don't know, that's a problem. I was ready to get this thing back together today. Gosh dang it. All right guys, so we're back at it in the shop today. Tomorrow is our first ride on the bikes to give them a, a quick shakedown. Um, but I've got a few things to finish up before that. So OEM Parts Finder came in clutch with a new nut uh, for my clutch hub. And then I also picked up a new lock washer 
So then I can get my whole clutch assembly back together and finish that side of the engine. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is with the carburetor here. So while I was doing some searching on the internet, I actually found old wrench reports from this thing. The mechanics were finding that this touches the engine case with the carburetor in the bike and it vibrates so much that it would actually foam the fuel and make it not run right. So I'm gonna have to grind that down a little bit and get this thing fixed up. Uh, so I can't get my flywheel off We don't sell a polar nobody sells a polar So you're gonna make a polar at that point. So I've requested the help of some very talented guys They're hopefully gonna lay out a bolt and make a flywheel polar. I Don't know fingers crossed that it works. We got it We're gonna turn Wes into a machinist here Don't need to go super we don't want to crush the bread. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Even though it might look like it. Look at what I made. You didn't make it. <laughs> you did. I did. No, you didn't. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we're gonna see if this works, I guess. Benefits of having a machine shop. That's right. This would have never happened. Except you only have the right wrench ready to go. That might be enough. Oh, did it? It's got an eighth inch. <laughs> I think I have an RC car with a bigger flywheel than that. Yeah. Hey! It worked! Pull that stator plate off. Woo! Let's see that little baby flywheel. What flywheel? That's gonna chug yeah. right through five miles. Thing's gonna out. chug so good through all that. Can we weld some trust. weight onto that thing? <laughs> Alright, so we just got the flywheel out. I'm gonna swap my crank seal out really quick, get this bike back together, and then we're off to test these bikes. But it looks good. <laughs> Chances jacking with Chase's butt. I didn't do that. Don't get that on film. You are pissing Chase off. You know that, right? We're going to have such a good time. <laughs> 